spike in violent accidents like these? What's driving the huge jump we're seeing in cars hitting pedestrians? Rent control becomes the law of the land in Oregon, but we'll tell you who the new rules don't apply to. The Methodist Church votes to strengthen bans on same-sex marriage and LGBT clergy. The Northwest churchgoers who aren't too happy about that. Plus, a state of emergency in Lane County after a week of heavy snow. But there is good news tonight in the tiny mountain town of Oak Ridge. And can winter really make you feel sad? We verify tonight on KGW News at 6. We begin with breaking news out of Vancouver tonight where police were reportedly involved in a shooting. It happened near 12th and Jefferson, right near the Open House Ministries homeless shelter. According to the Colombian, witnesses on scene there are saying that a person was killed. We're going to be working to find out what led up to the shooting and have a crew on the way to the scene as we speak right now. So look for updates as we learn more. Now to the state of emergency in Lane County and everything they've been dealing with there. Three days, no power, mountains of snow. Finally, finally right now some good news out of Oak Ridge, Oregon tonight, but not nearly enough. Governor Brown declared a state of emergency there and in several other places that were hit extra hard this week by snow. For days now, the only road in and out of Oak Ridge has been cut off. ODOT has been escorting people down Highway 58, but only a few times a day. Our KGW Storm Team coverage continues here at 6 o'clock with Morgan Romero live in Oak Ridge. That's about 40 miles east of Eugene. Morgan, what a difficult week for people there. Yeah, absolutely. But good news is, as you can see behind me, power is restored. However, not everywhere in town and the city is still partially cut off because of dangerous conditions along Highway 58. So it's taking serious teamwork from multiple agencies and locals who live here to get Oak Ridge back on its feet. Driveways up and down Oak Ridge blanketed with snow. People shoveling their way out helping neighbors and those who need it most. But down trees are still blocking people like Sunny Zelstra, who lives in the mountains. Nobody can get out up there except one family. She's still without power. Being without any power, we have a wood stove. She's making do with that, thanks to her neighbors too. It's good to see the community, you know, come together. You know, we're all pitching in, you know, it's like, uh, do you have firewood? Yeah, I got firewood, can you bring some down? We're bringing some down on sleds, you know, we're like, you know, what do you need? Where are you at? And in the meantime, Sunny and many others are lending a helping hand. My house is taken care of, my roof's cleared, my house is warm, now where, where can I help? You know, so, and that's, the, you know, that's what we need to do especially when we live all the way up here and we need to make sure that our neighbors are safe and our community is safe, you know, so we can get back to our lives. People are freezing in their house. People are living in their cars like we were just to get warm. Patty Lee is grateful for that help. For us to know that all these people are here and the pharmacy is open for our medications, wow. <laughs> A big shipment of supplies came in when the road was cleared for emergency services. Everything from oxygen to food to fuel, Red Cross and local churches set up warming shelters where they have meals and cots. Baptist Church brought a uh, complete semi that's a kitchen. Mayor Kathy Holston says volunteers and city employees did well over 100 welfare checks and home deliveries to those who can't leave their houses. And I thought oh, it was so nice to see everybody step out and who maybe wouldn't be helping one another um, on just general beautiful days because they're busy doing their own lives when they um, have a disaster come together. Yesterday and today, ODOT escorted drivers along Highway 58 only at a couple points throughout the day, so travel is still limited on that road. No word on when it will fully reopen. Boy, this is a stormy week we won't soon forget. Thank you, Morgan, live in Oak Ridge for us. Let's go to Matt now. Matt, what is next for us? Things are calming down a bit. We still have some rain and snow showers out there, but we warmed above freezing. There is a little bit of snow towards Oak Ridge right now, but it's mainly north. This is moving on that moved on through actually earlier in the day. Now we just have a couple of scattered showers over on the east side of Portland, so things are beginning to improve. And when we look out and what's coming up next, well, for, um, it, it does look a little bit better. There's less snow, but boy, what a February we just finished off. Third coldest on average. The final numbers, of course, be calculated after midnight tonight. The coldest was back in 1956, and in 1956 February, we had two days where we only hit 50. This February, only once. So that's a record to only hit 50 degrees once in the month of February, and that was way back 
on Groundhog's Day. Some irony there for sure. So scattered rain and snow showers overnight tonight and tomorrow. I don't really expect any issues for the morning commute. They are rather scattered and I think we'll get a break for the morning commute, but sticking snow also confined to elevations above 1000 feet and for the weekend dries out. We'll get quite a bit of sunshine, but it will be cold and it will be windy and we're not done with chances for lowland snow either. More on that later. Back to you. I'll take a little bit of sunshine in the meantime. Thank you, Matt. Appreciate it. Let's go to KGW meteorologist Joe Ranieri. He's joining us from down, down, downtown Portland. You heard everything Matt was saying about February. Luckily, it's the shortest month, though, man. We got <laughs> March. We got March to look forward to now. I think people are hoping it's going to be a little warmer, a little sunnier. That's right. We're knocking on March's door finally for a lot of people. But like Matt just said, it's official. February 2019 is going to be going down as the third coldest February on record. And you factor in all the snow we've seen off and on over the last couple of weeks. People I spoke with are ready for a change, and they'd like to see it sooner than later. Walk around the Rose City, and you'll still see people bundled up in their winter hat and heavy winter coat. But they want to see some changes soon. I am. I am ready for some warm weather, maybe Arizona weather. February 2019 is going to go down as a February to remember for Portlanders like Jim Grandoville. Uh, with some friends uh, this morning drinking coffee who are a long time, I mean lifelong, Portlanders and they remarked, God, this is, he thought, the coldest February he's ever experienced. And they said, we've only had one day over 50 degrees. He's right. Winter kicked off with very mild temperatures. Well, I, I look at it relative to December and January, and it was really nice weather in December and January. A lot of sunshine. In December, we saw 14 days with temperatures of 50 degrees or warmer. In January, we saw that number 17 days, and this month, only one day. And it's this time of year, Jim and his wife, Shosa, like to take advantage of the outdoors. We are going hiking with some of the uh, Portland Parks and Recreation groups. So, yeah, having a little bit warmer makes it a little bit easier. But it wasn't just Portland that saw a chilly month. February has been really bad. Um, it's, I've never seen it like this. I've been flying four and a half years and I've never seen it this bad. Flight attendant Hope Tucker experienced it across the Pacific Northwest. We're fly back and forth from Seattle to Spokane and they've been canceling a lot of flights from to Spokane to Boise, uh, Portland, all of the, the smaller um, planes. With spring just a few short weeks away. I take vitamin D3 when it's cloudy, cloudy, cloudy. I said today, hmm, maybe I don't need to take it. Jim and his wife are hoping they can walk into March with a little more sun and a little warmer weather. Now, restaurant managers I spoke with said they were hoping for some warmer and sunnier conditions as well over the next couple of weeks. I went to what, one sandwich shop in northeast Portland. That manager told me when they see sunny and really pleasant conditions, they can easily see their sales double compared to a day. Kind of lost your mic there a little bit, but I think you were saying that when the sun is out, people like to sit outside and have a meal. Yeah, I agree with you. I, I might be there this weekend if we can see some nice sun. Bundle up. Who cares if it's a little chilly? Uh, you can stay up to date on the forecast and weather warnings by downloading our KGW Portland weather app. It is, of course, free for Apple and Android devices. A legend in Oregon politics has passed away. Norma Paulus broke down barriers during her career in public service. She was the first woman in Oregon ever elected Secretary of State. That was in 1976. Chris Willis joins us now with a look back at her incredible life, Chris. Well, Paulus grew up in Nebraska, but her family moved to Oregon when they lost everything in the Depression. She couldn't afford to go to college, so she started working for the Harney County District Attorney. After battling polio, she moved to Salem and became the first woman at Willamette Law School. Paulus was first elected to the state legislature back in 1970 and would serve for six years. That's when she ran for Secretary of State and became the first woman to hold an Oregon constitutional statewide office. That distinction because Maureen Newberger was the first woman to hold statewide office elected Oregon's U.S. Senator in 1960. In 1986, Paulus was the Republican candidate for governor losing by an extremely close margin to Democrat Neil Goldschmidt. Paulus would go on to serve as superintendent of public instruction and even led the Oregon Historical Society. We caught up with Paulus a few years ago when we asked what she is most proud of. She quickly deferred credit for her contributions. As poor as we were and uh, as well off as I turned out to be, uh, the major reason was I was always surrounded by really good people. Nice to see you. Hello. To others, Paulus was 85 years old. Her death comes just two days after Secretary of State Dennis Richardson passed away. Richardson was the first Republican to hold that position 
since Paulus.